I got a dear brother, he's been involved in our ministry for 35 years and he's a, a good New Yorker like us, maybe a little more New York-y. <laughs> but every time, we, you know, he and I talk each week, we pray together each week by telephone, he's uh, about 700 miles away from us here. And he always gives me this New York thing every time we talk, he'll say to me, what's happening? Now that's a typical New York reading, what's happening? To which my answer has always consistently for 35 years been to him, wars and rumors of war, right. famines in diverse places. And every I mean, week he asks every week the, same he asks the same question. Every week he gets the same answer. So these things have been going on. But you still, you need to know that there is an appointed time. Don't be fooled. You know, Peter said in the last days, mockers will come with a mock, where they're mocking, saying, where's the promise of his coming? It's coming. And so many of the signs are there. Just look at the world all around you, right? So, we want to look at these things and assess them. But you know what? If he doesn't come to get us, we're going to go to him. Mm -hmm. And life is fragile. Yes. And you had better be prepared, one way or the other, to meet your maker, mm -hmm. okay? But here's one of the things I, I want to say, okay? Now, I just read that verse. Jesus said that you need to be on the alert, right? Mm -hmm. You need to be prepared. But I think that we, the followers, the disciples of Jesus Christ, who desire to live according to his word and the, and the, the instruction of his life, the life he lived and the words he spoke, yes. there's something more spiritually deep than being prepared. And that is being prepared. That's right. Now, if you follow our Bible Talk website at all, you'll, you'll see that's a word that I use commonly that God put on my heart a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I try not to prepare things. I try to prepare things. That's right. Because I want everything that I do to be based on what I've heard from Him. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not, think about the logic of this. Whatever is not done in faith is sin. And without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say anything on His own. He didn't say anything unless He heard it from the Father. Yes. So His preparation was praying to the Father. Mm -hmm. He was always pre-praying, pre-praying for whatever was coming to Him, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's an attitude that we have to get into. And I know that you know, I, I've intimated this many times in the past during the course of these studies, mm -hmm. that there is nothing more important than our relationship with God, and our prayer life is not just us talking to Him, mm -hmm. but it's a conversation with Him. Right. So we need to be hearing from God, otherwise you will not be prepared. You will be listening to the world, and you will be the world will be giving you the instruction on what you need to do to be ready for what's coming mm -hmm. in your life. You know what? And they'll get it wrong. Like I said, the message of John the Baptist was change the way you think. Yes. Right? And it says, we're not, to, we're not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. You're either going to be thinking the way the world does, mm -hmm. or you're going to be instructed by the Word of God, which is profitable, Paul wrote to Timothy, right? For correction, for reproof, for training in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's the place we have to get to. Yes. If you're going to be prepared for anything, it, it had better be because you are pre-prayed. It's a very good point. Well, I, I, really, I really would ask that you contemplate that, that you think about that, and see the wisdom of that statement, all right? And make it the habit of your life, regardless of what you're doing, no matter what you're confronted with, whether it's a situation at home, whether it's a situation with your health, with your marriage, with your job, with what's going on in your, your the congregation you're part of, Everything had better be founded on what you are hearing from God. Okay? I, just, I want to read another passage from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 25, right after 24, which is still basically going on the same way. 
Jesus said, he told a parable, he said, then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Hallelujah, the bridegroom is coming. Five of them were foolish and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the prudent took oil and flasks along with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the prudent, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the prudent answered, No, there will not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Later the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day or the hour. Be on the alert. We are so easily distracted, and that is one of the schemes of the devil, is to distract us from having our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ and our minds set on the things above. 